Hey guys, this is Erica the Goober. If you're new to my channel, I am a freelance digital artist. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how I began my art journey. I intended for this to be one video, but when I started working on it, I realized it was going to be way too long, so I had to break it up into two parts. In part one, we will talk about the early years when I started drawing, why I decided to become an artist, and my art journey up until college. So then in part two, we'll be talking about art school and starting a freelance career. I feel like hearing the stories of other artists' journeys has always helped me find my way. I wanna tell you the story about how I found my own creative path in the hopes that it will help you find yours. So with that, let's get started. I've always loved to draw, even at an early age. I loved drawing in this notebook that I called my life journal that I started at six years old in the year 2000. I would draw and write about the things that I loved or the things that I did, which was, let's be honest, about 75% Pokemon. And I absolutely loved my gel pens. I would bring a big bag of them to my babysitter's house and I would try to draw the characters on the TV shows we were watching. At age nine, my dad bought me my first sketchbook and a how to draw book called How to Draw Cartoon Animals by Christopher Hart. At this age, I loved to draw, but I never considered being a professional artist when I grew up. I actually wanted to be a singer, like a pop star, like Lizzie McGuire in the Lizzie McGuire movie, which I'm not really sure why, because I was very shy and I was afraid to sing in front of people. But my dad was the one who encouraged me to create my own characters and to practice drawing more. I love drawing anything Pokemon, Hamtaro, Zelda, or Animal Crossing. I remember in fifth grade, I would bring my Animal Crossing guidebook to school every single day. Then I would ask my friends, which one's your favorite villager? And I would draw whoever they wanted me to draw. In middle school, this trend continued and I would bring this big folder full of all of my computer paper drawings and a Neopets magazine every single day. People in my class would ask me, hey, can I see your drawings? And I would give them my folder and then they would be passed around the class. This actually helped me build confidence in my drawing ability and encouraged me to draw more. But not everyone was so nice. I remember one time in particular where these two girls asked to see my drawings and started asking me what all the Neopets names were. They would point to each one and ask me the name and then they would laugh as I told them. I caught on that they were only doing that to mock me and I felt humiliated. This was not the only time I was bullied for being an artist or drawing the things that I liked, but I tried not to let it bother me. Later on in middle school, I ended up designing our yearbook cover, our class t-shirt, and t-shirts and posters for our school's anti-bullying campaign. I also discovered my love of digital art in middle school. I remember playing around with Microsoft Paint, but I never knew that there was a whole world of digital art out there or even that tablets existed. I was very active on Neopets in middle school, but not playing flash games because I had really slow dial-up internet. I mostly played around with designing my user page with basic HTML. While looking through other people's Neopets pages, I found one user in particular who incorporated digital drawings of her pets on her page. I loved her drawing style so much that I started trying to draw my Neopets in a cute chibi style like she did. But I was not able to achieve the same look of her digital drawings on paper. I did a lot of research on digital art and the tools to create it. In 2007, for my 13th birthday, I got my first tablet, a Wacom Bamboo Fun with Photoshop Elements 5. To learn how to use my tablet and Photoshop, I would scan my traditional drawings and I would try to color them on the computer. In 2008, I joined DeviantArt and started posting my art online for the first time. I learned so much from tutorials on DeviantArt. At the time, YouTube wasn't that big and there wasn't much of an art scene with tutorials on here. A lot of my learning was trial and error and experimenting with different drawing 
drawing and painting techniques. I remember spending countless hours playing Neopets, creating new art, and discovering new artists on DeviantArt. I spent most of my free time making digital paintings. It was everything to me. I fell in love with digital art and I wanted to do it for the rest of my life. By the end of middle school, I decided I wanted to work in the animation industry as an animator. When I got to high school, I focused on developing my skills in my art classes and learned about the elements and principles of art. I tried new mediums like acrylic and oil paints. I learned how to draw still lifes and faces. And I was also involved in art shows and our school's art club. But most of all, I was always drawing in class. So much so that I would get called out by my teachers sometimes. I drew in my sketchbook, the margins of my notes. I even themed each week of my planner and treated it as its own sketchbook. I drew a lot. I was also still drawing digitally a lot at home and I was very active on DeviantArt. The summer after my junior year of high school, I attended Ringling College of Art and Design's pre-college program. This was a month long a program in Sarasota, Florida, where I lived on campus and I took four basic classes plus two electives. In just one month, I felt like I learned so much. I took my first figure drawing class and used charcoal for the first time, which ended up being really helpful and gave me a head start when I started college. I chose 2D animation for one of my elective classes. It was so cool to work in that classroom because all of the animation desks were actually from the old Walt Disney Studio in Florida. But here is where I found out just how complex and difficult animation is. We were assigned a ball bounce animation for our class project, and I chose to animate a beach ball because we were in Florida, I guess. This turned out to be incredibly difficult and a good reference video of a bouncing beach ball was actually hard to come by. It was so hard to make that ball look like it was lightweight. After over 200 reams of paper for a 14 second animation, I knew that I was not patient enough to be an animator. In my second elective class, I found out where my passion lied, visual development and character design. To be honest, I didn't even know this was its own job before I took the class, but I knew that the assignments we were given in class were very similar to what I was already doing on my own in my sketchbook. So for this class, we would be given a piece of paper with a prompt on it, and you would have to turn in a character or creature design the next week. After presenting your design, it would be passed on to another classmate in your group and they would take your design and either change it or add to it. And you would get one of theirs to do the same thing. One of my favorite ones that I did was a redesign of the Frosted Flakes mascot. When I presented, my professor said that was exactly what studios would be looking for in a VizDev portfolio and that he was very impressed. He was actually a pretty tough professor, so I saw this as a major accomplishment. By the end of pre-college, I had gotten a taste of what I wanted my college experience to look like. I loved being part of a community of artists. I felt like I had finally found my people. So that is actually where we are going to stop for part one. I have so much to talk about regarding college and starting a freelance career that I thought I would dedicate an entire video to those two things. If you are eager to see part two, it's actually up right now on Patreon for my strawberry milkshake tier and up patrons. Part two will not be released publicly until August because I am taking a break from Patreon in July and my YouTube videos are actually a reward for one of my tiers. If you join in July, you'll get early access to part two and a shout out with your name in the credits when the video is posted publicly. Plus, you'll gain access to all of my previous Patreon posts and tutorials from previous months. The only tiers that are not available in July are the Print and Sticker Club and Sketch Request tiers. Additionally, current patrons will not be charged for July, but they'll still have access to all of the content. I'd like to say thank you to all of my patrons for supporting my art and my channel. I have a few shout outs to do for new and upgrading top supporters. These include J-Man, It's Josie 99, Lathe Draws, Anna, April, Barb Nig, Gimme the Woot, Malith, Emma, Ashley Ingenthren, Avery, Sandra, and Sammy X Shelley. If you'd like to join the Patreon community, you can check out the link in the description. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell to be notified of my future videos, including part two. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.